a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Hello everyone, I'm Billy the Kid and I'll be your host today for this episode of Freedom Friday. There is little we cannot do. Welcome, fellow patriots, to another episode of Freedom Friday on Uncommon Sense. As you may have guessed, I'll be discussing the Second Amendment, but moreover, I'd like to take a gander at the broad picture and why this amendment is so vital in order to sustain the liberty we've taken for granted in America. If that hit a sore spot, I apologize. However, we have all myself included, taken our freedom for granted in one way or another. We've all been given a cushion in life just being born here, and we've become comfortable and somewhat complacent. But that, I believe, is changing. So without further ramblings, let's get into this. To dissect this First Amendment, let's talk vocabulary. What is the definition of regulated? Referring to Webster, copyright 1995, regulated is a verb that means to control by rules, system, etc. In other words, it means to be controlled by organization and discipline. All right, what is militia? Militia is a noun, meaning a reserve body of citizens enrolled for military duties, called upon only in emergencies. Some might ask how this differs from the army. Militia, as stated, are citizens, not active duty military combatants. It is a collection of average citizens whom have all agreed that when the time comes in which they are needed by their community, state, or country, these citizens are ready and willing to defend it. Many of you have probably seen Mel Gibson's The Patriot, and if you haven't, shame on you, go put it on your shopping list before it's cancelled and nearly impossible to find, like pleasing saddles. Now, The Patriot may not be all that accurate historically, but it was a well-made movie, and it does portray a militia as it is defined. Whereas military, by definition, from the pre-stated source, is pertaining to or involving armed forces or warfare. Military is actually an adjective that we now use as a noun in place of the word army, which by definition is a body of peoples organized for war on land. So now that we've refreshed our minds on the vocabulary, at least in the first section, we can define this first part of the statement as an organized group of citizens willing and able to defend their community, state, or country. The second part of the amendment states, being necessary to the security of a free state. I think this part of the statement is extremely clear, so I think we can all come to the conclusion that the aforementioned militia is a requirement for the citizens to maintain their freedom. Why is that? Well, any government can overreach and become authoritarian. Without a strong means of protecting themselves, the people are at risk of tyrannical control. Next, it says, the right of the people to keep and bear arms. This statement, as it reads, gives all Americans the lawful right to keep, or own, and bear, 
What is bear? Okay, where's that dictionary? All right, I say that for effect because I already looked it up when I was typing my script. Bear is a verb that means to support, as in to bear weight, or to carry, as in to bear arms. And I love that my dictionary used that as an example for to carry. All right, now last but certainly not least, it says, shall not be infringed. That is my favorite part. The perfect ending, if I may. Infringe. This means to violate or encroach, to break by forceful opposition, to fail conspicuously to show respect for, to desecrate something sacred. All right, now let's read a full translation according to the vocabulary in the original text. An organized, disciplined group of citizens willing and able to defend their community, state, or country as required to maintain freedom. The right of the people to own and carry firearms shall not be infringed or violated. As a decently educated human being who likes to read, I think this statement is very straightforward, yet there is so much debate over its intentional meaning. Why? It's very clear, bluntly so, in fact. The debate against the Second Amendment has never been about the safety of the citizens. Without gun rights, there would still be crime, and in fact, statistics have shown that communities with the least restrictive gun laws have the least crime. Without the right to keep and bear arms, citizens are left virtually defenseless from criminals or... or... Alright, what else? Oh yeah, duh, an overreaching government. That's what the debate is really about. If the citizens are unaware or confused on the rights they possess, those rights can easily be taken away through manipulation and distraction. Thankfully, this last week, many Americans witnessed a victory for our Second Amendment at the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. Almost simultaneously in Florida, another young man was on trial due to an incident with SWAT in 2017 that resulted in the death of his girlfriend. This young man's name is Andrew Coffey IV. He is a young American of African descent. That's right, he's black, and he was acquitted of nearly all charges. You'd think this would be at least a minor victory for organizations labeling themselves Black Lives Matter, or for the parrots in the media always squawking about racial justice. On the contrary, cases like Mr. Coffey's are not relevant to the radicals. For cases like this, prove the narrative to be false. It shows that all Americans, no matter skin color or creed, has the same baseline rights as their neighbor. Andrew Coffey's case is direct evidence of that fact. Another tragic case in point about the debate over the Second Amendment is the recent horrific event on Sunday in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Five people died, 40-something injured, many of them children, two of which were in critical condition. One of those two is only three years old. The other, only eight, just passed away, making six victims total. The lack of access to guns never would have stopped Daryl Brooks or anyone else in a twisted mindset with an intent to harm others. This amendment is our strength. Without it, we would already be living under authoritarian rule. It is the defense that holds our freedom in place. Without the right to own and carry, we would be unable to form the militia necessary and therefore we cannot defend ourselves from anything. So as we celebrate the victory of the Rittenhouse trial, let's remember that one game does not win us the championship. Collectively, we patriots have been too quiet and complacent when it comes to defending our Second Amendment. There are not enough good politicians on our side who will fight for us. But there is more than enough of us to change the system that the democratic laws have cultivated. Across our country, there are numerous laws that do in fact infringe upon the Second Amendment. We, the people, need to push back against these while the momentum is still on our side. If we relax and ease the pressure due to one victory, then we may as well throw in the towel now, for it's just a matter of time before we finally lose. So I'm calling out patriots everywhere. Your party means as little to me in this fight as the color of your skin. 
We are all Americans, and it is time we stand united as a people and face the challenge head on, without surrender. We, the people, we are the leaders. We have forgotten that they work for us. We must grow out of this mindset that these people in office are our leaders, and stop calling them such. We must take at least some accountability for their positions, as they have clearly used these positions to their own personal advantages. Maybe not us here or those listening, but many citizens in this great country have fallen for the lies and elected these people. As a collective society, we must open our eyes to the corruption, embrace the reality of it, and remember with our souls that we are Americans. This is our country. We will not kneel, we will not back down, and we will not run. Let us remind them the words of our forefathers. Don't tread on me. Come and take it. Thank you for tuning in to Uncommon Sense today on this Freedom Friday. I am your host, Billy the Kid. Signing out. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country.